Dan from Next Venture Motorsports. I'm coming to you from our R&D bay with our new JL 7000 series skid plate system. It is the strongest skid system you can bolt to the bottom of your JL or JT. It's made out of 7075 T6 aluminum alloy, which is about twice the strength of 6061 T6. It's even stronger than the A36 mild steel that you're going to find out there. And it's really the culmination of five years of building skid systems for these platforms and decades for others. And I mean, from, from my daily driver to the feedback we get from our customers to ultra four JLs that rely on our parts. Uh, we had a lot of lessons that we have taken in over the past few years and it all went into making this the best skid system that money can buy to put on the bottom of your JL or JT. So yes, the, the skids that we've been building for the past four to five years for the JL and JT platforms here, uh, out of 5052 aluminum, they are discontinued in favor of this. This is better in every way. And we're even gonna be able to process this faster through our own production line here in our facility in Grand Junction, Colorado, uh, more efficiently. We have designed this around our strengths as a manufacturer, as a fabricator. But what are some of those lessons that we've learned over the past five years? Uh, whether you're talking about your daily driver or some of our customer vehicles that have seen some pretty extreme use um, or even ultra four JLs you got to ask yourself what is the job of a skid plate uh, if it bends a little bit or if it gets a dent in it did it do its job if it kept the fuel tank safe if it kept the engine safe if it kept the transfer case safe well I think you gotta take a look at the long view there did the skid bend so far up into the transfer case that it actually rubbed a hole through the T-case after a while, I would consider that a failure. Uh, I'm happy to say that this JL, even with our previous generation of skids, has gone through some seven, eight, nine, yes, nine rated trails uh, that you don't see a whole lot of full <laughs> body four doors on. And these skids have always done their job, but the new skids are better in almost every way. So I guess what I'm getting at is, is we took everything that we loved about the previous version of these skids and kept that. The UHMW, the slippery sliding over obstacles, absorbing that impact and distributing it better across more of your skid surface, it means you're not getting hung up on obstacles as often, which means you're not having to reattempt the same obstacle over and over and over again as many times, which means less wear and tear on your drive shafts, on your axles, on your U-joints, on the whole vehicle. And some of the other things that we really liked from the previous generation of skids was the recessed hardware. So we're keeping that too. And absolutely no gaps between skids. This is smooth. It's gotta be done that way. No gaps between skids, nothing to catch on, hardware that's not sticking down. Everything on this bottom sliding surface, these UHMW wear plates is either recessed or completely flush. High clearance. We've always loved the improvement in clearance underneath the vehicle. By removing the factory fuel tank skid, we actually gain a little bit of clearance underneath. Some systems will retain that, not only do you retain the weight, but you retain that additional thickness of now, well, dead weight. Because the factory fuel tank skid, it'll do the job for a minute. If you're going to go to extreme rock crawling trails, you probably want some of the 7075 T6. Not the stamped 16 gauge variable thickness metal that the factory one is stamped out of. Oh, yeah, that's... So my diff bomb prevails then. Oh, that may damage your gas tank. 
And and the last thing, and this is kind of where it all started, was was keeping it lightweight. Do you want to add 150 pounds of steel underneath your vehicle, or do you want to pull out all of the factory steel parts that are no longer necessary and add something lightweight like aluminum? We're doing the same thing. We're just doing it with 7075T6 now. While the previous skid plate system under here didn't fail me, there was one major gripe for me, and that is, and, and this goes for pretty much any of the materials that you're gonna see on the market, you hit them hard enough, they dent. So yeah, we designed in enough room that even if they started to bow, bend, twist, that they're not now so close to your transmission pan that they're gonna wear through and present a leak or a failure. Um, every material is gonna have its bending and breaking point. Every material that we've used to date, including the new ones. Uh, even your frame rail can become the weakest link in here. If you call Jeep on Monday and say, hey, I got T-boned by a Mack truck. Can you warranty my frame rail? I thought it should have been tougher. Well, no, you, you got in a collision. You, you hit the bending point and the breaking point. So yield strength is how we describe that point, that bending point, that permanent deformation point. And with 7075, you're talking about 73,000 PSI for that yield strength. That's, that's entirely the reason that we switched up our materials. Now, because it is so difficult to permanently deform and we're not gonna bend it on the brake, that's why we process it flat. And since you lose a lot of strength, if you attempt to weld it, by the way, it doesn't even like conventional methods of welding, uh, we process it flat, don't bend it, don't weld it, and that's exactly how we install it. So this isn't a bend right here. This is a uh, steel inner structure or skeleton or backbone, however you want to call that, that ties all the pieces in together. And that's how we keep the maximum strength intact on this particular aluminum alloy. Well, the other changes that you might notice that we've made to the design, if you're familiar with the old one, is we've added even more UHMW here. And yes, that means even more hardware. All of this hardware, though, goes into inserts that are already in that steel backbone structure, and they are twist-resistant, inserted into hex holes. They're hex rivet nuts. That way, you know they're not going to spin on you. We've also done a lot to improve compatibility out of the box, with long arm kits, particularly the one I'm running, which is the rock crawler long arm system. So that means you no longer need to pay somebody labor or expend your own time on trimming out where this lower control arm mount sits on the frame. And up front here, where it ties in with the long arm kit, we previously had the uh, rock crawler supplied brace in there and you could get it in there. It would unfortunately drop the skid about a quarter of an inch because that was the thickness of the brace so what we offer now if you choose to upgrade your transmission cross member here the factory one is aluminum it's pretty darn stout uh but the pems have a tendency to pop out and we really don't like that going back to those hex rivet nuts that we were talking about we don't like it when hardware spins in the frame or a cross member any of that so this is an entirely new heavy duty cross member that we optionally offer that is sold separately for those of you that want to run the rock crawler kit if you want it to be 100 percent bolt-in this upgrade is for you not only does it uh, give you back all of your clearance but it ties in beautifully over here okay and then for those of you that have a 392 and you want to keep your factory exhaust safe we do offer this mid exhaust skid here uh, it'll even fit the 3.6, I'm probably going to bolt one up here before I put another dent in my resonator here. But it'll even work with the MagnaFlow exhaust upgrades, both the Street Series and the Crawler Series, out of the box if you order that for your 392. And then one of the other things I really like that got added here is our oil access door. That's essentially an access panel that drops out. So this is its own little piece of UHMW and aluminum, and they both drop right out. You can put them back in when you're done with your maintenance. This is something that we had done on the 4xE skids a while back. It's even something that uh, I kind of played with on some of our <laughs> way back when skid systems about 10 years ago, and it's always worked great. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to get onto this very front section, unless you're getting really crazy with your JL. and. 
something I've learned over the past five years. Guys that have JLs, a lot of them, bottom to wheel them. So anyways, that's most of our update on how this goes together, what this looks like underneath. It is uh, phenomenal on the trail and we'll be giving you some more updates. We've got some more videos coming, uh, both with our drop tests, our throw down, our material throw down test, as well as some videos on how to install this. It installs very similarly to all of our old skids, but there's a few extra steps. Uh, you do have to do a little bit more assembly up front, but one of the other differences that I absolutely love on this one is we divided this into a two-piece fuel tank skid. So not only, you probably didn't even notice in the video, it's that seamless. So not only is it uh, a little bit easier to handle when we're trying to get it wrapped up for packaging, uh, it's easier to install because you're not trying to install the whole fuel tank skid all at once. Also worth noting, if you've got an early 2018 JL, you have a slightly larger fuel tank. It doesn't mean that you actually have any more usable capacity. I think they rated it another half gallon, but it's a little too large next to the pinion. So if you tell us that you've got a 2018 model, we're gonna ship you both versions of this bracket that accompany that extra bulge back here. That way you're not calling us asking us for a different part. And then all the way out here in the back, we have improved our clearance to pinions at larger axles and suspensions that move a lot more because you want something flexy. And in my case, I've got the Rock Crawler 3 Link out back. It does have a lot more travel than the factory suspension did. Thank you guys for watching the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And hopefully we'll catch you for the next one. See you guys on the trail. So sometimes when you come up with a new product, you get the accounting department involved. And they tell you, well, why don't we just uh, make this cheaper to produce, value engineer the crap out of it, fit it out, basically make it cheap, maybe outsource some of the production. Um, yeah, once again, we've gone ahead and done the complete opposite of that. This is the strongest thing that you can bolt up to the bottom of your JL or JT. Uh, these are premium materials, 7075T6, that pretty very few people use on their Jeep builds, period. And yeah, we're not going to be doing Next Venture Lite anytime soon. This is Next Venture Motorsports JL 7000 Series Skid System, and it's available now. You can check it out on nextventuremotorsports.com. Just recording yeah, just, what yeah. we all think is going to happen. Well, yeah. I think the, the round, the actual bowling ball is gonna do better for the test on the aluminum because there's no sharp points on it. It's just a sphere. And it's, sphere. You know, it's gonna be a little softer than steel, so I think it's gonna absorb a little bit more. So, so I still think the steel is not gonna break that ball. I'll put 20 bucks on it. <laughs> we're really high up and we're bowling thanks carol pound bowling balls until they explode how's it going down there boys <laughs> this is not high enough i gotta pee <laughs> see if you can hit the duck <laughs> have like tipo meters in them don't you must i'm gonna i'm gonna throw you off I work on these every day. I don't care. <laughs> I work on these every day and he's worried about it. I think we're gonna be just fine. I can see the fourth floor of the hospital. Hopefully they can see us cause we may need it. <laughs> Dan's dropping, I'm done. I don't like this. All right, are we ready? I don't know, Dan. <laughs> Whoo, baby. All right, diff bomb drop test. Three, two, one. I don't care. I think I know what's wrong. I don't care. Just looking at it. So it's not actually level. So it's not going to go all the way to the top. So we're just perfect. We are losing valuable height and valuable information. The test works. Of course it's going to work. Then we're good. And I this don't... is consistent. It's going to stop here every time. What happened there? I'm from Florida. This has nothing to do with where you're from. Yes, it does. Florida, the highest port, seven feet. <laughs>